Hi folks, this is your old pal Uncle Al. Now I always say I do a magic trick or some kind of amazing trick or neat trick. Well, here's one of them. Yeah, I know how to pull tricks on people. Okay, simple. You just got to watch what's faster than your what's in my hand. And we have a little guest. Let's see who it is. And it's... Hi there. This is, whoops, damn it, costume problem. Oh, heck, we did this five times already. Okay. Hi, I'm D.Y. Trey. I'm supposed to have a fitted little hat, but somebody goofed up on the wardrobe, didn't they? Okay, uh, right now we're helping Trey from Homestead Aquarius uh, super nuclear walking staff and some of the things I was looking at it but I don't think we could want to put a, uh, a rocket motor or or something like that that's dangerous we're going to keep the kids safe but nuclear power and that's going to be it so I made a list of what you can do to the staff yeah I hope she follows it right listen very carefully I'll catch you later Trey you mean for me, not the other tree out there. Laugh it up, Bunky. Okay, I've been doing this like six takes. I had interruptions. I had people looking at me like I was nuts. Real fun, folks. Uh, thank God for tea. Okay, I don't have any large rubber bands. My nephew took them all. They're making slingshots. <coughs> Great, I just coughed in my bindle. Okay. Now, if anybody watched Way, uh, Waypoint Survival or Ranger Survival Fieldcraft, they explained these tricks they could do on a hiking staff. Now, Waypoint Survival does period pieces of camping and survival from the 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, you name it. He does the rock whole bit. And he does, okay, hobo. Very good hobo, too. And he shows you how the hobo survived back in the old days using a hiking staff or walking stick. Now, Uncle Alan Old, I don't use a hiking stick, I use a cane, but the same principles, except a lot smaller and I'm a lot older and I have to use sometimes two of them. Okay? Now, I made a list and we're going to go down everything. All right, I hope you can see that. My handwriting's bad. And I had to write down a lot of stuff. Okay, it's DOI tray, super stuff. One cut or get a six foot staff, one inch thick. That's easy for number one. And you see that, number one. All right. Number two, round off the tip. Put that down. All you see on this will be down below in the description once I finish typing it up. I got arthritis, so it's hard. It was hard to me to write this one too. Okay, you want to round the tip off. See how it's rounded off? All right. Once you round off the tip, okay, once you round off the tip, okay, fit a utility hook screw for a variety of uses, retrieving items like your hat, goggles, glasses, anything, picking fruit, or just hanging it up someplace. There are places the big hook with a little hook so you can hang it someplace. And basically, 
This is a hook screw. And you can hang it like that. And the staff is attached to it, so you hang it on that. I got a big one. You want a smaller one than this, so it doesn't get in the way. And you can hang your staff on a coat hanger. Uh, you can hang three of these together and make a tripod. Okay, there's many uses for this hook. Wow, Uncle Al, I didn't know that. Shut up, Trey. Okay. Number three, wrap two heavy rubber bands for a slingshot to make a slingshot or Hawaiian slings. See? Now, all right, I don't have a heavy rubber bands. All my nephews took my big box of big rubber bands. Reason why is you get two of these and you put on a Fort Ratsy slingshot warrior and you can make yourself a nice little slingshot and you pop, pop something with it with this it's a lot easier for the straight but I have to work with a cane okay and you wrap it at the tip all right, this would be a bigger rubber band, but you get the point. All right, so far we got two rubber bands. We got a hook, and the top of the tip is rounded off. Now, don't get a big hook like this. This is for demonstration purposes. Okay, that's number three. Wrap two heavy-duty rubber bands for slingshot or Hawaiian sling. A lot of people ask me, what the hell is a Hawaiian sling? You've never been spearfishing. Okay. At six inches below the top, drill two holes. That's number four. At six inches from the, below the tip, drill two holes. One hole is a small peephole. Okay. For distance and map reading. I'll show you a trick on that once you get done. The second large hole is for a hobo bindle for Hawaiian sling. Okay. Remember I told you about the rubber bands? Whoops. Yeah, that hurt. We tied here. Well, at six inches, it'd be a, well, not with the curve, but. You pull it back and you hold on to the rubber bands and you let go and it goes forward. That's great if you're going spear fishing. That's why I call it, you want a couple of heavy duty rubber bands or Hawaiian sling, okay? And that's Hawaiian sling or make a hobo bindle. With that large hole, cough, uh, cough goo. Now, the, usually this is a small one. I'm just using for demonstration. Have you seen the video before this? This holds your metal cup, your spoon, some kind of metal can you cook in, and uh, some food rations, either in a cloth bag, wax paper. Uh, they didn't have baggies back then. It wasn't built, invented in the 20s or 30s. So you carried everything. That was your survival pouch of the day. So see, way... Uh, Waypoint Survival's old videos or Ranger Survival and Fieldcraft. They'll show you all about that. All right. Yeah, getting old. All right. And another thing for that large hole, okay, other than carrying your bindle. Now let's see if you see all those bad hobo movies. They got the stick and they're carrying in back of them. And they're walking down. Okay. Every Charlie Chaplin or stuff like that. All right. You use that hole if you want to send up uh, to put up a tent post or a stake. Okay. At the five foot mark. A brass tack. Okay, that means you're at the five foot mark. 
20 to 30 feet of paracord for a hand grip and an emergency throw line, secure with a clovis stitch. Now we already talked about paracord. All you have to do is wrap it around here. Okay. So you have the line and it's a grip, a hiking grip. And if you do it right, and it has to be five inches at the top. So you have a good balance if it's a six foot staff. All right. So remember paracord, 20 to 30 feet. Yep, I'm going on this little hiking days. But most of the time, I'm going to have mobility issues. It's a little hard for me. And my doctor gets mad if I try to go camping. And a lot of my friends, oh, you can go camping. I don't want to be people out there, but I have to them. The old fart went out there and camped and died. No, I'm not that stupid, folks. Okay? So, and you want to secure everything on that. All right, my voice is cracking. This is my fifth take. Ugh. And you want to secure that with a Clovis clove hitch. Now, if you see Anthony up, Palmetto prepared. He showed you how to do one of those. At the, uh, two tacks at the three foot mark, midpoint of the six foot long staff or uh, cane or whatever. So it could be used as a. Remember. What was it? Got number seven. Okay, number six was paracord. Number seven was two black tacks. So you have your balance. Midpoint balance with right there, and you could use it as a weight scale, weigh things. Okay. So you use it as a scale and also it tells you certain feet. Under the three foot mark, you want 50 feet of fishing line. Depends what, what weight of fishing line you want. Seen the previous video before. Okay. Under the three foot mark, 50 feet of fishing line, around two band-aids or gauze, your choice, pads, and two fishing hooks and masking tape. Secure the line with a clovis hitch. Okay. Now, what I tell a lot of people is put in a snack bag, wrap around your one inch pole. This is where the duct tape comes in. Once this is secure, you put a band of duct tape. This keeps the what? It keeps the bandages and the hooks dry so they don't get wet. And when you take it off, it's intact and you have a patch right there from the duct tape. If you take out the gauze, you could use that or the uh, duct tape for something else. Now, I tell a lot of people because a lot of people are like, well, I just use fishing hooks. Yeah, then you have to use the band-aid. Fold over a piece of masking tape painter's masking tape over your fishing hooks so it doesn't hook you or puncture the bag or hurt you. Okay? I've seen a lot of bushcraft or make the mistake and I'm, like, I'm looking at why do you have a fish hook in your hand? Well, I don't know. Okay. So we just put that in there. It's simple. Not rocket science, folks. Fairly easy. Oops. Okay, that's number eight. Under the three foot mark, 50 feet of fishing line, your choice. Two band aids or gauze pads, two fishing hooks, and uh, two fishing hooks and masking tape folded over. Secure the fishing line with a clover hitch. Again, palmetto prepared. You should have seen that video. All right. Brass tack at the two foot mark, 
you mark down Morse code from A to Z with a marking pen. Okay, indelible marking pen, easy. Or with a wood burning scribe pen. So if you wood burn, you mark up the stick. Not hard, folks. Okay. At number 10, brass tacked at the one foot mark. It's a, uh, you make a ruler out of it with one inch scale marks. So, you get one foot, see all the markings, and then you write it with a pen, so you have on your staff, at the end, a ruler, so you can measure things. Not hard, fairly simple. You could use a marking pen or you could use a wood electric wood burning set. Okay, that's number 10. Number 9 was brass tacks to make the Morse code. Brass tack at one foot level for the ruler. Simple. Number 8, under the three foot mark, 50 feet of fishing line around two band-aids, gauze pad, and two fish hooks. Okay. I know I have crappy handwriting. Okay, that was number 10. This will be all down in the description below. I'm going to have a hell of a time typing it up, folks. Number 11. Okay. The nuclear option, all right? You could do a lot of things at a set screw. Now, let me take off the safety. Okay. What you do is drill a hole with a, a, a ferrule. Okay, it go, and this is a a little bit deeper and that right here you have your set screw you screw it in now it's not into a wood it's in a piece of plastic where you can take out the screw and uh, what you call it remove the screw now if you have tubing copper tubing works good uh, any kind of tubing now this one if you kind of look is a spear point so you can put this as your knife or a spear, or a brush hook, or whatever. That's a nuclear option. You could turn this into a weapon. You could put this as a club. Okay? The trick is, see that little hole? You have all this room to set it down onto the tip. So you figure out where you're going to put the set hole in. All right. Now the reason why we do stuff like this with the set hole and the screw. Then you could turn it into a weapon, a spear, a knife point. Okay, at the end of a short staff or, or a hiking staff, you have a weapon. You could do the same thing if you want to put in a metal point to, uh, this out. you could put a knife or a spear point you could put a frog gig on it. Everybody knows what's a frog gig. A little fork, and you stab into the frog. You could put a hiking spike or stabilizer. Now, if you watch Homestead Aquarius, he's, he's outdoors all the time, and he uses a spike. But you got to remember, once you come away from the woods, and if you're with civilized people, that is considered a weapon. Same as this, okay? So you have to be very careful on the nuclear option. Now, I'm only listing five options. And we covered C. We covered the knife and spear point, frog gig, hiking spike or stabilizer for 
rocky ground, and then we have a scatchet. Okay, that's S K A T A T C H E T. And basically, what that is, it fits on the end of your pole. It's a hammer, a skinning knife, and a hatchet. So you have a little battle axe. You know, start chopping around. Make sure Bunky doesn't get this. Don't play with it, Bunky. It's very dangerous. So you go around and you start whacking things. You could put a ball peen hammer head on it, again with the set screw, and you got a hammer. Okay, or at distance, wacko. Remember, it set screw anything you put uh, put there. So I'm only listing five. Now my favorite is a scatchet and turns into a long axe or a hammer, and then road flare. Okay, see that? Road flare pipe holder. Again with the copper pipe. Now remember, you're setting a set screw. Okay, see that? I know it's black. I'm trying to find a light. Hold on. Yeah. Okay, see that set screw hole? All right, you see that, folks? All right, instead of a knife blade, you're holding a road flare at 2,000 degrees. I don't think anyone, anything will come near you. If you have an end of a cane or, or a staff, you know, flaming road flare. Yeah, let's see you get through that. All right, fairly simple. Ah, gang. Oh. But you could do all sorts of things. All right. I'm just listing five. All right. That's the nuclear option. Unfortunately, if you do it in a city, it's considered a weapon. That's the nuclear option, folks. You have to be very careful. Now, a kid safe and friendly non nuclear option is a rubber. Furniture leg tip or crutch tip. One of these. Okay. That you fit on the end of the staff or cane. Okay, that doesn't look deadly. And I use this to walk into the courthouse. Yeah, real dangerous. Now, if I was there and I had this at the end of the staff, I get weird looks from the sheriff's department. Okay, so we don't want to use this. Simple, folks. It's not hard. I'm sorry it took so long. I'll see you later. Go check out Vineyard Chicks with Trey, DUI Trey, and Homestead Aquarius with his hiking staff. He used the spike model, little feral, with the hike. A spike. Yeah. Okay, I'll see you guys all later. Sorry this was a long one, but I have a lot of things I have to cover over this. All right. Yeah. I also have some more notes. I have a lot of notes. Okay. Um, with the spike, it could be used to pick up litter, uh, used as a hiking stabilizer over rough ground or soft ground, used as a bindle stick to hold a bindle, hobo bindle. All right. And then it could be as an extra reach so you could grab somebody. Help me, fine. Where are you? And if you think I can't grab people with this cane, you'll be amazed by I could do how fast I am with it. But you could grab people and pull them off or pull them out. Or if you fail someplace, you could, with a, a good staff, stop you from falling. Okay? 
easy. Yeah, let's see. Uh, for extra reach and a rest here. We covered that. You could use it as a with the hook. Remember the hook? You could tie a line to it at the end. And you cast your line. And it's a fishing pole. You got 50 feet. Mm -hmm. And you got your fishing pole. Now, let's see. You could use it, the, the staff with a hiking stabilizer embedded into the ground as a tent support for tarp or poncho. And one of these days when I feel better and if I go outside, I'll show you how to do that. Uh, I have to do things, but like I said, I'm crappy with the camera. I'm doing the the laptop because I have mobility issues and it doesn't look too hot when you see the guy in a power chair going yep let's try this and then he dies after building a shelter great no way in hell okay if you have two of these two staffs each side of a litter to make a litter brace and that's one thing you got to ask somebody and if you watch Waypoint Survival or Ranger Survival and Field Craft, they show you how to do it with blankets. Okay. Defense against wild animals or crazy people. You could use it as a, a club or a staff as a blocking shield. Because it's six foot, it's a staff. Okay or bow or hand bow with a cane <sighs> sorry with a cane block jab hook all that wonderful stuff but please take a real martial arts course before doing anything with the staff all right or a hiking stick as lifting support <coughs> I just grab something. <laughs> so if you need lifting support, and you have a rope, tie the rope around you, loop it around to that, and instead of pulling you hard around the waist, this acts as lifting support, and you go up without like, <gasps> all right. And then finally, you tie the bright cloth like a flag. And you use signaling. A lot of people are like, why signaling? If you know Centipore, if they could see you, you could send a message. Well, why can't I use a whistle? They can't hear you after a half a mile. But they could see the red thing, and you could wave them. This is why I try to teach people how to do Centipore. Well, why can't I use a mirror? Uh, if it's a foggy day, but they can still see you, there's no sunlight, you use centipore. And if you know how to do centipore, if you're in a copter or in a plane, they know what you're waving. And a lot of people still doesn't understand what I'm talking about this. So anyway, please watch those other channels and Waypoint Survival and DUI Trade. To explain what Uncle I'm saying. And I hope this helps out. Sorry this has been long because Uncle I'm a little dowdy nowadays. And I think I went over my 30 minute mark or under my 30 minute mark. So I'll see you later folks and you have a nice day. Bye.